Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and it is Monday, and you know that means it's time for Warfronts. This week on Warfronts, we are on my mage. What? Isn't it the bard's turn? Yes, actually it is, but since 1.8 came out, I've had some weird crashes with the client, and one of those crashes occurred on my rogue while I was filming an episode of Warfronts, while I was filming this episode of Warfronts, in fact. My rogue got the 15-minute timeout from Warfronts because, of course, he died in the Warfront when he was disconnected, and uh, that's the same as deserting as far as the game is concerned. So I just couldn't wait. I only had about an hour to get this footage, and so here we are on my mage. I'm not real excited about that because I really wasn't looking forward to playing the mage. I was already in a sort of a bard mindset. I'd already played a game with the bard, and I was ready to go. I was ready and rare and ready to go. But here I am on my mage, so we're going to make the best of it, right? As we should. One mistake I want to point out right off the bat is you'll notice if you watch the, uh, if you watch the chat, you'll see someone asking for assist, and I never give them assist. Fact of the matter is I wasn't even looking at the chat at that moment. I did not even realize that I was the actual raid leader. A lot of people feel comfortable having assist. They want to have it so that they can mark, especially in the 50s bracket. That's 100% my mistake. Uh, no excuse for that. That's something that I need to be looking for. And uh, we all need to be looking for because, you know, it's just a nice thing to do. Just what the hell? Give the guy uh, give the guy assist, you know, give a few guys in the raid assist if they want it so they can mark. Flat out, no excuse. It wasn't malicious. I just didn't see it. So, dude who asked for it because your name is scrolled off the screen, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. So, of course, we go to the codex as we should, as you always should in this map, and we just beat them with numbers. A uh, flat-out numbers game, we bring more to the party than they do, and we win. This is how it goes, right? We're going to claim the Codex and pretty much hold it for the duration of the game, which, as you might imagine, normally means victory, and in this case, it does indeed. So, spoiler, we're going to win this. But at the same time, I'm only telling you that because I think I'm probably going to sort of twist and turn and maybe not always talk about the gameplay that's on your screen right now, because as I said... I wasn't expecting to play the the mage as the water mysteriously reappears from wherever it is that it goes. So my plan for this week was to work on situational awareness with my mage, or excuse me, with my bard, but I find myself on my mage with less of an opportunity to do that. So what I was planning to do with the bard is just kind of Try to keep an eye. Try to keep an eye on the health of the people around me. Try to keep an eye on the numbers, uh, you know, of enemies. My position, where I am, where I need to be, making sure that my motifs are out, that sort of stuff. And I don't really get a good opportunity to do that because I'm here on the mage. I'm on my damage dealer, and there's not as much of an opportunity for that. Um, as you see me running like hell from this warrior, <laughs> like, oh my god, don't hurt me, Mr. Warrior, please. And actually, with the help of my friends, I managed to weather the storm. And uh, we take him down as we take down pretty much every assault that comes towards the Codex during this game. So uh, situational awareness. I get a little bit of a chance to, uh, to, to practice situational awareness as I hit rank 7 there. Uh, but I really didn't get the opportunity that I wanted to, uh, to actually practice what I had intended to practice. So, you know, I just kind of felt a little off the whole game. And I'm feeling a little off this whole commentary. So, as I said, I hit rank 7 right there. And to some of, that, uh, some of you, that might be shocking that I'm so low. And in fact... That's just the reality of things. I am a father. I am an adult with an adult job. And this is just this is just so heartbreaking that I just don't get to play a game that I enjoy so much as much as I want to. I am only rank seven. And uh, and I also I just have other interests. I'm not in that zone that I was in maybe five years ago when all I played were MMOs, a particular MMO with the initials WOW. And I just can't do it anymore. I just can't put the time in that I really need to be on the high end of a game. And it's really sad, you know. I used to be a raider. I used to uh, I used to strive for high end PvP. I mean, back in the day with WoW, when they had the uh, the rankings for your in order to get your title, you actually had to achieve that rank for the week. You know, I was always trying to get up there to get you know uh, whatever what is it war what's the top horde rank? Ah, I forget what it is, but I was always pushing to try to get up there. You know. Because it was just a matter of pride to me. And, and being a raider, you know, I was never a, 
I was never a, a, a raider on the bleeding edge of content. I was always kind of there in the middle of the road with the, the guilds that I would, would play in. And that's something that I haven't gotten to experience at all with Rift. And I regret that so much. You know, I think Rift is going to go down as the last MMO that I actually play with any sort of seriousness, even though, again, haven't been able to be as serious as I like with Rift. And it's kind of heartbreaking. And that's just something that unfortunately happens. You know, we grow up, so to speak, and things just change. And it's really weird to look at the me that I am now and, and where I am with the games that I play and the things that I enjoy versus the person that I was just five years ago uh, when I would have still considered myself an adult. You know, five years ago, I was in my mid-20s and would have considered myself an adult then, but now looking at myself where I am now, I feel so much more like an adult. And it's kind of depressing. I mean, it's great in so many ways. But when it comes to looking at those things that I used to do as a child uh, and an adolescent, a teenager, and even uh, a young man in my 20s, uh, so much has changed. Um, and it's a really weird place to be in. So the reason that I say that is to all you guys out there that are in your teens, your 20s, you don't have a lot of responsibilities enjoy that stuff because it goes so quickly and you, you don't even notice it. I mean, if you want to be a gamer and you want to do this stuff, it can, it can be done. You know, you can continue to game no problem well into your old age if you want. I mean, I used to raid with a guy who was in his 70s and wow. So there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's, it's great. It's, it's not, it's lost that stigma that it maybe once had. It's not considered something that kids do it's it's not well some people still look at it that way you know it's gained some respect so to speak and so it's not as taboo as it once was to to game well into your older age but uh whether it's taboo or not isn't really part of the computation when when you when your life moves forward because that doesn't factor into your free time, your obligations to family, to work, and to all those other things that come along as you get older and get more responsibility. So, you know, at this point I'm rambling, but it's just a stream of consciousness thing where I'm just trying to say to you guys, you know, if Rift is your MMO and you play it hardcore, enjoy it. Because in five years, you're going to look back on this and you're going to wish that you had this sort of time to devote to whatever it is you're doing at that moment. And... Don't take it for granted, I guess is what I'm saying. And it sounds like something I should be saying, like, on my deathbed. <laughs> but uh, it's just something that's been on my mind lately. Uh, partially because I just renewed my Rift subscription for another three months. And the fact of the matter is, in three months, when that subscription comes up again, I'm probably going to have a hard time justifying to myself renewing my subscription. I'm going to go through the same process that I always go through. Is it worth it? Uh, you know, is it something that makes sense in the moment? And I'm going to make the decision then and there. But it's just something that's been weighing on my mind as I moved forward. And, uh, you know, I had to change my payment uh, option to a different option. And, you know, previously you pay for an MMO, you set up your automatic payment option. You don't even think about it. It's not something that even enters into your mind. But when I had to go in and I had to change my payment option, it actually got me thinking. And that's kind of where all this comes from. You know, this isn't me saying in three months there will be no more war fronts. I will no longer be a Rift player. That's a possibility. It's always a possibility anytime my subscription is up. Because right now Rift is, it's a, it's a payment to payment kind of thing. Every time I, I'm set up to make another payment, I weigh the options and I make the choice. So I'm looking at my, my Rift life, I suppose, and I'm thinking, if I only have three months left, then that's a big if, how do I want to go out? You know, and I think the answer is I want to try to push forward with some of the stuff that I haven't managed to do. Uh, I want to try some raids. I want to focus more on actually seeing a lot of the content that I haven't managed to see. So... I guess I just want to play the game more. Uh, the Guild Finder is a cool thing. Um, I think I've already found a guild that I'm going to join. I've sent them a couple of messages. We've been talking. And, um, you know, that'll be cool. Maybe get a chance to get tagged along into some raids or go along on some farm nights or something. But 
yeah, it's just a weird place to be in right now, thinking about um, potentially the end of my MMO career, because when I stop this game, I mean, this won't be something that I ever come back to. Uh, you know, I may flirt with WoW one more time during the uh, Mist of Pandaria lead-up. I don't even know if I'll purchase the expansion, but I'll go back to see what they've done uh, with the new uh, skill trees. And I'll play Guild Wars 2, but this is the last major MMO that I think I'll be a part of, and that's just an interesting place to be in, and it's kind of... I don't want to say it's been weighing on me. Like, that's... The, the, the term something has been weighing on you means that something has weight and this doesn't. But uh, it's just been something that I've been thinking about since I changed that payment information and set everything up and uh, kind of coming to the realization that this might be it. You know, this might be all. Check out my damage here. I'm really disappointed with this damage output. I really felt like I did a lot more. I mean, I was so active. And granted, I had a lot of downtime, and I think I probably could have been in the 60s or 80s without all the downtime that I had. But I just felt like I did so much more, and I was kind of disappointed with that final number. Not that I really measure that. I mean, my team won. I got a decent amount of favor. You know, that's the important thing uh, to me. But uh, just a little disappointed there. But... Uh, yeah, guys, so thanks for listening to this really weird, rambly episode of Warfronts. I don't know if you guys have some thoughts on the subject, uh, you know, if you've been there kind of with, uh, with the getting older thing and, and kind of seeing the, the gamer that you were uh, sort of fall to the wayside in favor of the adult and the responsible individual that you've, you've had to become. But uh, it's just something that's been on my mind lately, like I say, as I look at um, the twilight of my MMO career and uh, it's an interesting thing. So thanks, guys, I guess, for listening to this. If you didn't turn it off 10 minutes ago, and uh, I do appreciate you guys. I appreciate every view that I get, and uh, I push to do this stuff. You know, right now, uh, I should be asleep, but I push to get this episode out because I, uh, I'm committed to the schedule that I've put forth. I'm committed to the content that I've promised, and I'm committed to uh, the people who want to see this stuff. And I know that I've picked up a lot of viewers because I'm sort of the de facto last man standing in terms of Rift. Uh, there's not a lot of channels left hanging around, and I've gotten a lot of subscribers just based on the fact that I'm still here and I'm still kicking. And maybe this isn't the content you would choose to watch if there were 50 other things out there. But I appreciate every single one of you. Everybody who comments and tries to help my sorry ass get better at this game, I appreciate that so much. So... I'm going to tie this thing up because this has just been one of the weirdest episodes. This is like, I feel like I should be sitting in front of like a, a purple wall on a plush sofa in like a, a, a reality television show confessional or something. But uh, these are the things that come to one's mind when you come into a come into a commentary with absolutely nothing to talk about and a game uh, in your face that you really weren't that into because you were expecting to play your bard. So, all right, guys, thanks again. I have been Big Dave, and this has been a disaster. All right, until next time, take it easy.